Hello everyone, myself Deeksha from Biotechnica and today we are going to discuss regarding some really important uh, topic. The discussion is based on the toppers, those who have qualified the CSI net examination and based on that Every one of us wants to know that what uh, qualities they followed, what strategy they followed that they got such a high rank and score in their CSI net examination. So since you are also preparing for the examination and nobody uh, wants to quit, nobody wants to get a low rank, everybody wants to become a topper. So it's necessary for you also to get those techniques known so that you can, you know, well perform in the CSI and examination that is upcoming. So whatever happened in the past, if you felt that you weren't able to score well, you want to score well, here we will be revealing some toppers techniques. I have made this video, the session based on the interviews that I have seen at many places of the toppers and how they, you know, um, told about their preparation strategy and how they ended up being qualified uh, GRF or LS. So Based on that, I have prepared this video where I will be revealing some uh, top-notch strategies that they followed, the pattern that they followed, and the trend that I have seen in, among all the toppers in common that led to the, their success story. And now we shall be discussing and revealing each one of them. So stay tuned for this video, like with this video till the end, and I hope you will like this video. So, since any competitive examination it's not easy it comes with a lot of preparation it bears a lot of patience and it comes with a lot of strategy for you to you know get through the examination and get a good score well score so it's important for you to know the tips and tricks how you can you know perform well in any competitive examination be it csi unit or any other examination so some of the techniques some of the features that i have seen among the toppers which i am enlisting here which you can also surely follow for your benefit in the csi net examination for you to better score well and you to, you to know about the techniques of the toppers who have qualified with rank one or two or ten in the csi net examination the first one that i have seen approach with strategy so this is a topic that i'm mentioning approach with strategy because i have seen everyone whosoever have qualified the jrf examination with good rank they always had a strategy in their mind how to approach the examination so this is important for you also to note um, this down to pen this down because approaching with a strategy is important which i have seen commonly in the toppers so the approach with strategy it comes with uh, making a suitable timetable for yourself or knowing the requirement of the examination what exactly the examination wants from you what all knowledge they expect from you so that you can qualify the examination then you should be well aware of the pattern of the examination what is the pattern marking scheme negative marking and you should always set a realistic realistic goal that will help you to even stay motivated because the goal is important the destination is important to keep you up during the journey so you have to always approach with strategy and this is the one thing that i have always noticed among the toppers who have qualified for the examination next point that i have seen is basic concepts okay so check basic concepts first so i have put this um, and like subtitle because uh, you should always be you know well crossed with the basic concepts i have seen it among the toppers they have always put emphasis upon the basic concepts first and later they came for practice or solving or aptitude based uh, their implementation towards the examination firstly they were really um, devoted towards the basic concept they really checklisted the basic concepts and then they followed the strategy so you should always check your basic concepts first which is important for you so basically you should learn the basics of the concepts you should always uh, know the grassroots of the concepts the conceptual knowledge you should approach steadily that means that when you're learning basics you shouldn't start you know going to the higher levels thinking that this is so lame for me this is very basic uh, i shouldn't you know study these things i should go to the next level no to never do that always approach steadily so that means that be consistent and approach slowly first you should you are if you're going through the stairs you should always approach one by one okay so you should approach steadily you should approach with a clear mind and patience all right and then you should develop a concept mesh concept mesh means that you should always apply the concepts in your real life also you, should, you know you should apply that what, what happens when you know uh, glycolysis uh, if you're talking about glycolysis you're, you're eating something you should you know suddenly think about yourself okay i'm thinking that uh, i'm eating something that is getting converted into atp ultimately so how 
will my body utilize it how the what are the process will will undergo in between these things so you should know about the basic concepts you should know about the concept mesh you should develop it in your mind so as you know you are applying those scientific tricks those scientific mechanism in your own life which will help you in retaining those concepts in a better way so always try to live in those um, concepts so you should develop a concept mesh and ask question to yourself if you are feeling any difficulty in reading something if you are feeling that why dna what is the difference between dna and rna why it is like what is the stability difference why what is the difference between nucleotide and nucle nucleoside you should always sit um, like and you should think that what is the difference why you should ask yourself questions because in order to you know know and analyze you should ask yourself questions because ultimately you are the yours you are your own and you will be the only person who will be solving your own you know conflicts in mind so it's important for you to ask to yourself the questions that comes in your mind and then you know go and refer to something else asking yourself the first question is the first key source for you to be become an inquisitive person okay so i have seen it among the toppers also they are really devoted they are really passionate and they really live up in science so you should check your basic concepts first third thing that i have mentioned do smart work because i have 100% seen that the toppers have always came up with a good strategy with a effective smart planning so it's important for you to do smart work and not just mug up concepts not just you know grab those concepts based on the um, like the tendency of just learning don't do that so always go for a smart work that means that you make separate syllabus of your own okay so if they have the csir have provided you with a syllabus always try to make a separate syllabus for your own that means that you're not sticking to the uh, the uh, classical uh, csi net syllabus you're making a separate syllabus based on your comfort based on your interest based on your like emphasis upon the recurrent topics so always make a separate syllabus of your own and for that you can always highlight important topics that you know you feel is important and then you can put easy topics as an add on and not in a mainstream what does it mean is that the easy topics which you feel are the easiest don't put it in the mainstream of your preparation strategy okay just always put all the difficult topics and the topics that are important one in the mainstream because the easy topics you can even study one time and you feel go for the examination you might uh, remember everything so easy topics are not your target your target are the difficult topics as well as the topics that are most important so put easy topics as an add on so as you you know to score better and not in the mainstream strategy planning and specify the time investment you should always allot hours like yeah i have to study this many of hours for this topic this many of hours for this topic and accordingly it should depend upon the weightage of the topic also so the hours should be directly proportional to the weightage of the topic also so always do smart work which is the third quality i have seen in the toppers the fourth quality is they devote the maximum hours in study so it doesn't mean that you have to always study for the whole day it means that you have to effectively plan in such a way that you are devo devoting your maximum productivity in studying okay so for that uh, the tips which i give so that you can enhance that you have to be producing the maximum output so in order to produce the maximum output you have to assign hours when you are productive so in a day there are certain hours when you are most productive certain hours when you are relaxed certain hours when you are lazy so you should allot the hours for effective study when you are most productive be it the morning noon whatever is suitable for you so you should assign hours when you are most productive and you should take time for revision when you are relaxed so relaxation time shouldn't you know you should not uh think about uh, studying something new when at the relaxation time because relaxation time is you know trying to keep your brain uh, like bit uh, rested and it wants to like in during the time of revision you are trying to you know keep your brain relaxed okay so if you are putting your emphasis upon the topics that are really uh, difficult and the time you are relaxing then your brain will always be you know in a mesh of uh, being productive and in that situation your brain will not work efficiently so you should revise the time when you are relaxed not that the time when you are productive because productivity will always take your smart work and at the time you should assign your hours for the productive studying that is for studying the topics that are important and difficult as well as revision should only be done when you are relaxed 
Now follow 80% productivity rule. What does it mean? Most of the time what we do is we spend a lot of time studying about many topics but last in at last we understand that we are not able to understand most of the topics. Okay. So follow the 80% rule where you are revising the 80% of the topic every time. Okay. So if you are only revising the 80% of the unit every time but you are repeating it, repeating it then your efficiency for uh, understanding the unit will get effective and better. Okay. So you should devote maximum hours to study but it shouldn't be the whole time. You should divide it accordingly to your ease because your mind is different and another person's mind will be different. But the one thing that I have seen you should devote the maximum hour for your productivity. This is the first for fourth hack for these students who have been the toppers in the CSI net examination. The fifth point that I have seen is they have used different methods to, methods to study. They haven't relied upon one method or sole one method to study. They have dif different methods. They have definitely utilized many methods to study. So you can also do it. So you can either use references book, you can use notes, you can use the study materials. Always stick to the reference book, but notes and the study material are your personal preference. So, but your quality of the content shouldn't go in vain. It should be always such that you are getting the maximum benefit of the concepts. Now follow all in one policy. Never go for different sources. Never do that. Always follow one policy. It means that always follow one book for one, one uh, particular subject. No, don't go for different books for one topic, one subject. Always follow one book. One book which is best for you to understand and to grab the concepts. Okay. Now you can use apps also to track your daily uh, study schedule like the apps which you can use to track your routine, to track your study plan, to track uh, like even for procrastination also you can use different apps. So that depends on you. Use learning softwares. There are certain softwares. So if you're not, uh, if you're more of a digital person if, and if you don't uh, like like making notes making notes by pen and paper you can make notes through the softwares also because they they those uh, softwares are most effective more effective because they will you, you know you can put your uh, pictures also diagrams also flowcharts also in those software you can make it a better digital note that will help you in you know revision and during the time of your preparation also so always use learning softwares if you are more inclined towards the digital platform use learning softwares so the students some of the students who were really enthusiastic about the digital things i have seen them using notes on their like a tab and everywhere and i've seen that i've seen that personally also and they use those learning software and that effectively help them I mean, you know, getting a good uh, rank in the examination also. So that is about the constructive use of the digital platform. Okay, so you should always use it constructively. Okay, and then you can use the e-learning platform. So the e-learning platform can be the YouTube tutorial. It can be the uh, private tutorial of any coaching, but like uh, somewhere or you can go for any video that, you know, can find better for your preparation. You can use e-learning platform because it will help you in more retention of the concepts. The sixth point that I have found is set bigger targets. That means that your targets so shouldn't be the way it's, it shouldn't be exhausting for you. It means that those targets that are you, you are setting for yourself should be completely realistic and it should be completely approachable. Okay, so you shouldn't set the exhausting or unrealistic targets. So I have seen among the toppers also, they have always approached the examination with a target that is realistic, that is not exhausting. So for that, I'm giving you some tips. So firstly, what you can do is you can specify your interest after cracking the examination. So what you will do after cracking the examination? What is your ultimate goal of cracking CSI net examination? That question you should answer in your mind first. Then you can make a score goal that is relevant for your qualification. Let's say if you're not a uh, in the age limit of qualifying for JRF, you can go for LS, then you are setting the uh, score accordingly. If you have a rank in your mind, that you want to be among the top 10, top 20, top 100, then accordingly you are setting the score. But you should set the score goal and you should always take a safe margin. It shouldn't be like 100, 101, okay. 100, we are qualifying for JRF, so 101 I'll put for... Uh, uh, JRF no 120 like usually it's 120 for JRF no so 120 it's for JRF so I will put 121 marks for uh, for me as a safe margin no never uh, take that always take a safe margin because if you go and approach the examination your marks will be always less than how you have anticipated okay so always take a safe margin there 10 make 15 marks should always come with a safe margin last thing that you can do don't allot more than 60% of your daily schedule for studying okay now you have all the time to study 
study you can devote the maximum hours to but that's what devoting maximum hour doesn't mean that you want to spend the whole day studying 24 hour studying no don't do that don't allot more than 60 percent of your daily schedule for studying because your brain needs rest you need rest you need to sleep also you need to work on other things also you need to work on your physical health also so don't allot more than 60 percent of your daily schedule for studying for the toppers also might they study 15 hours 16 hours but they have effectively managed their brain relaxation as well as their mental fitness also so physical mental fitness is also important so we should not allot more than 60 percent of your of your daily schedule for studying this is the about the setting bigger goals okay now the next point that is important is practice again you have concepts you have all the knowledge but if you don't practice your score your rank will not will never go in such a way that you can become a topper practice practice and practice this is the first and the foremost thing that you can do the practicing means that you can practice the questions you can go for unit wise question previous or questions whatever way you want go for questions and just practice the questions because in examination you, the questions will come it will not come in a paragraph where you have to solve the passage no questions will come uh, application based um, um, experimentation based so practice the questions all the time then learn aptitude okay learn aptitude that means that you should comprehend with the question your mind should be such that it's it is always ready to you know pick the aptitude uh, among the among the question paper that you have been given among the questions that you are going to solve so learn aptitude your mind you know should have that uh, track ab ability your mind should have that uh, just of taking the aptitude question so that you know you're always coming up with a uh, with a realistic approach to the questions your mind is always ready to grasp the tricky tricky questions also even the most tricky question if comes if your aptitude is good you will answer the question so you know try to balance the aptitude for that you can always solve reasoning even if the time when you're not having any examination try to solve reasoning mental reasoning verbal reasoning uh, non-verbal reasoning try to solve questions related to aptitude so if you will develop the uh, learning aptitude ability then it will be helpful for you to uh, solve the question even if the question comes you know in a circle it goes round and it comes straight away question is not coming then also you can always answer the question effectively follow the trend of the examination okay always see that there is a trend of examination and you should always stick to it you shouldn't come with the idea that you have to study everything you have always followed the trend of the examination and see what questions are coming repeatedly what uh, topics are coming repeatedly always put emphasis upon those practice formulas and mechanism because formulas and mechanism we tend to forget but those are the easiest thing to remember and if you remember though that will always boost your score high practice formula as well as the mechanisms it's important okay now the last part is believe in yourself so i've seen among the topper they have a lot of believe in yourself in, in themselves because they know that they have prepared so hard that they will ultimately get at least some of the goal at least if they don't become the topper if they never become the topper at least they can you know qualify the examination or if they don't also then also they have a positive motivation that next time surely they will do so this confidence this believe in uh, like um, in yourself comes with you know practice and dedication so always try to believe in yourself have a positive impact uh, have a positive outlook upon the things that you see always nourish your mind with the best with the healthiest thing that you can you know find uh, around you and never panic regarding the outcome because the outcome is not your in your hand but the process is so always try to go through the process in the best way in the best version of yourself which is best applicable for you so that you know you can achieve the goal not this time maybe next time so that belief is very much important so we shall wrap up today because these were the top 10 techniques top 10 the, uh, like techniques that the topper have followed all the time so that they would have they cracked the examinations and these are the techniques which i also suggest you to follow so that you know you can all always come up ending with you know flying colors in any examination competitive examination be it the csi on it or any other examination so always approach healthily always approach with a positive mindset mindset with a you know um with a proper technique and strategy it will always help you so i hope you have liked this video thank you for so much thank you so much for watching this video yeah